Welcome everybody to our fall trends report with Stitchcraft Marketing. I'm Leanne Presley and I'm the CEO of Stitchcraft Marketing. We're a niche agency that specializes in just fiber and fabric companies. And we're so happy that you're here today to share for our team to share the trends that we've been spotting. We keep coming up with all these new exciting things in our Slack channel. And we saw this and we saw that. And we thought we've got to get together and bring this all in one place and share it with our audience. So that's what we're doing today. Uh, I've got Annalisa, I've got Michelle, Rebecca, Flossie, Nellie, and Megan, who are all ready with some super exciting examples that we hope you can incorporate into your businesses. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Annalisa, and she's going to go through uh, the trends that she found. Go ahead, Annalisa. Hi. Um, so I what something that's really popped up for me a bunch of times is I'm going to call it merch. And so this, yes, we're, we're crafting businesses, we're fiber businesses, we do all these things. So when I say merch, I'm going to say anything that is not directly related to the doing of the craft. So I'm not talking about, you know, a, a needle finder when you're an embroidery person. I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, personalized fabric or anything like that. I'm talking about something that is not used in making the craft. So we're talking um, shirts, stickers, tea towels, a whole bunch of stuff. And so we know that places like Maker Valley and Shelly Ican have been around for forever and have really made their business on, you know, the 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 merch of craft. Like Shelly uh, Ican's tagline or Shelly Can's tagline is uh, merch for makers, which I think just sums it all up. Um, but what was interesting is I think it's expanded beyond these people. It's sort of um, gone to to things that where if you talk about it, you're you're looking at something and you're you can sort of say I'm on this team. So uh, something that's popped up is uh, the the people. So there's a designer group in quilting called the Ruby Star Society, and they put out a T-shirt for their 10 year anniversary. And it is not one of their fabric designs. It is not their logo. It is little uh, sort of drawn pictures in one of the designer styles of each of the designers. Oh, so, so it cute. is absolutely, yeah, it's really cute and I want one. Um, but there's, there's has absolutely nothing to do with quilting unless you are in the know and you're like, I'm on this team. I'm going to, I'm going to wear that and take it home. And then I can recognize other quilters out in the wild because we have mm -hmm. the same shirt on. Mm -hmm. So there's <clears throat> that sort of team mentality. And it's the same thing with um, inside jokes, like the, you know, stickers that say, um, use the pointy end, stick them with the pointy end. It was like, again, that says nothing about sewing on it. It says nothing, doesn't have a quilt block, anything like that. But there's, there's lots of little things where, you know, stick it on a water bottle and like, oh, they're on my team. I know who that right. person is. I know I can go up to them and talk to them about it. Mm -hmm. um, there's... Uh, there's other things like enamel pins that have gone along with events like stitch alongs, quilt alongs, yarn crawls. Um, so that sort of personalization that is, again, not stuff that is particular to the craft. But there's been some really cute ones for for yarn crawls and um, like Libs Elliott, who's a fabric designer and pattern designer. She just had a really cute one for her um so long in the spring, the static age pin. And so it's one of her fabric designs, but like she's done more with it. It's not just a fabric design. So in, in the flip side of that, there's a sort of a push towards, I, I think, okay, so we're all hand or handcrafts for the most part, right? Even if we're using a machine, it's still a handcraft. So I think there's that push again within the merchandise thing to have it be a little bit hand drawn. And I don't know if it's really a pushback from, you know, all the AI art that we've seen where you can spot it right away and like, this is not made by a person. Like, I want to see stuff made by people. So there's some really beautiful um, yarn. Uh, there's a, a, a couple of sweater kits by... Uh, Midori high rows that are some beautiful sweater kits that have these great sort of illustrations on the bags. And again, I will probably not finish the sweater, but I will wear that bag around and right. someone else will notice and be like, oh, I did. I started that project too. And I also didn't finish it. So um, that I, I think there's fun things like that, that, that are out and around that where you can sort of recognize other people of the craft while you're not crafting. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Is that everything that you spotted? Everything in your grab bag oh, for today i there's there's a lot i like i have videos i found the cutest stickers honestly the add to cart thing with finding all of these trends has been a problem like yeah, <laughs> whew, yeah there's been some no. cute stuff 
Yeah, I love it. And just makes me think about, you know, the t-shirts. Uh, the last time that we were at a trade show, that was super popular, where if you were from a certain shop, you were wearing the red t-shirts. And I even heard of a client that did a contest that if you were spotted on the show floor and you were wearing one of our shirts, someone else from our organization was going to come up to you and give you a prize. So mm -hmm. there's def I've definitely seen some ways you can really capitalize on that whole sense of belonging. You are in our tribe trend. So I love right. that. It's All right. So thanks, Annalisa. Next, we have Megan. Megan, what do you have for us today? Uh, I want to talk about granny squares. Okay. Um, you know, granny <laughs> squares have been around forever. They will be around forever. And the iconic thing I think of first when I think of granny squares is the blanket on the back of Roseanne's couch. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, which came back when the show came back. Uh, but it's not just for the back of Roseanne's couch, right? And we've had, we've seen crochet and granny squares uh, come back into, you know, Target and other places over the last couple of years. Um, and in fact, just the other day, as I was thinking about uh, this trend, um, I saw in Home Goods a uh, crochet granny square afghan for $60, which doesn't seem like quite the right price point. But um, there are a couple of examples of the, the spread and the span of this trend that I think makes it worth remarking on and um, paying attention to again. And that is um, where I first noticed this was uh, as I was watching the most recent season of Project Runway All-Stars. They are on season 20, believe it or not. And uh, this All-Star season had, uh, among other people, Kara Son, who was a de designer from season one. And she, in several episodes, was wearing this fantastic granny square duster sweater quilt that I desperately want to make. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just something that she was, you know, wearing as part of her kind of eclectic, funky, um, bold style. And it wasn't, you know, a, a focal point of the show. Uh, they never talked about it, but I noticed it. And right around the same time as I think she got eliminated is when I spotted the trend both on TikTok and Instagram of um, a user Infinity and Less who is making a human size micro crochet granny square quilt. She is using sewing thread and making granny squares that are wow. an inch square. Um, at last count, just a couple days ago, she posted an update that she has 460 squares made. Wow. And um, that is, I, I don't know what the size is yet, but she's probably going to have to make 10 times that many, I would imagine. Um, but she's producing beautiful content that's really fun to look at. And um, her posts consistently get 10, 20, 30,000 uh, views. Her highest one that I spotted had 465,000 views um, wow. for a crocheter, <laughs> which right. I thought was, was really cool. Um, but then we go from the last example of the span of this trend that I wanted to cite was from the uh, spring, summer 2024 Paris runway. Mm -hmm. um, the designer... Maureen Sayre, who's typically a menswear designer, also featured some feminine looks in his most recent show. And one of those is a body conscious, beautifully crafted, elegant uh, garment made of granny squares. And it is fashioned out of different sizes of granny squares. And, you know, the squares are tilted 45 degrees to cover the cups of the breasts and you could tell there's also some sewing, uh, machine sewing that went on to to put it together, but it is, you know, crocheted together. And I, I love a granny square, but I don't traditionally think of it as elegant. But here it certainly, it certainly was. So I think given how much interest there is in so many different sectors, we are going to continue to see that. And given that new folks who are interested in yarn crafts. Granny squares are the easiest thing to make. They're quick, they're easy, they're portable, they're infinitely customizable. Um, so that's only going to continue and um, sort of keeping that in mind, I think is going to benefit anyone who is in the yarn uh, business. Mm -hmm. Awesome. 
Thank you for that. Uh, we've got Flossie. What what has been coming across your radar, Flossie? So the trend I've had my eye on that I think has really been picking up speed this year and even in previous years is fiber blending, holding more than one strand of yarn together. Yeah. Uh, most notably, I'm seeing a lot of mohair or mohair silk blends held with wool. I think it's a really fun and interesting way to amplify the textures and the characteristics of the respective yarns. Um, I noticed this week, Stephen West posted a reel to the Stephen and Penelope Instagram account. Everybody here knows because I already shared it in our chat. <laughs> it was all about picking mohair and wool color combinations. And I loved seeing how adventurous he was with some of the color pairings. Um, Pom Pom Quarterly, like three days ago, teased an image from their upcoming winter collection. And it looks like there might be some fiber blending going on there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Lane Magazine's September 2023 <clears throat> issue features several garments where wool has been paired with mohair silk. And they also have an interesting merino boucle with mohair silk and an angora blend paired with mohair. I think adding silk and mohair to wool imparts this really lovely sheen from the mm -hmm. silk and that halo from the mohair it creates it can create like really beautiful color melanges because of the way the dye takes to the different fibers in the same or similar colors you can really see it in and i hope i'm saying her name right melody massacote's ecume sweater she used a fingering wool and a lace mohair silk blend and the wool is this subdued purple and the mohair silk is this really vibrant magenta mm. so it has this like shimmery lit from within quality it creates fabric with kind of like a luminous finish and i keep wanting to call it chiaroscuro of knitting but that's <laughs> not really accurate um i'm also interested to see the color compositions that crafters create by exploring contrasting colors uh the scandinavian company kit couture has several garments where they've combined wool yarns with mohair and silk but i was really drawn to their almo t-shirt specifically in the magenta color because they paired magenta with a reddish wool so it almost takes on this duochrome shimmer effect um one of the other uh knits i saw recently was joji locatelli's ready for fall 2 collection mm -hmm. i love instant crush it's aptly named i instantly developed a crush on it she's holding two lace strands of mohair silk together but it's in a fair isle pattern and because it's mohair, the pattern takes on this kind of like dreamy, subdued, almost blurry watercolor effect. Um, the mohair softens the sharp edges of the Fair Isle color work, and it's just really, really beautiful. She also designed uh, a pair of socks called One Weekend Socks, and they pair lace mohair silk with DK Merino. And then the other collection I saw was from Lang Yarns. It's number 278. It came out in August. They're holding three and four strands of mohair and mohair silk blends together. They're also holding Aran and worsted weight yarns together. Um, the one garment I saw that I noticed immediately was a striped sweater that held four fingering weight mohair strands together. It's a very loose, airy striped pullover. And at the areas where the stripes change color, they're holding different colors together to create this ombre effect. Mm. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how designers and knitters play with this trend. I'm hoping to see more contrasting color pairings to create the duochrome effect, like teals paired with like Kelly greens or like dark oranges paired with bright gold. Mm -hmm. um, and lots more darker hued merinos paired with lighter hued mohair silks to create like luminosity and, and mm -hmm. shine. Yeah, I saw so much of that trend, Flossie, at the Salida Fiber Festival in mid September this year. It was just everywhere. Uh, for example, this Huck and Ray Fiber Studio, they just had two full racks, just completely color coordinated. You had the lace mohair dyed with a fingering or a DK to make a combo when those yarns are carried together. Um, I fell for it. I had to buy this conifer collection um, for work, of course, 
Um, and you can oh, kind of yeah. see, you know, the two together. This one is the mohair. And then this one is actually a tweed, uh, which I love because you get a little bit of the texture in that one as well. Um, so this one is called Smoky Quartz. This is the lace Surrey alpaca and then um, and silk. So it's not a mohair, but it's definitely got that halo that you were talking about. Uh, and then this other one is the DK Tweed Superwash Merino with the Donegal Neps in, in it, which I really loved. So I had to pick up that for myself. Um, and it seemed like every single booth that I went to had this trend. Uh, Brenna Smith, DieSmithFibers.com. You can see here with the baby blue and the yellow combinations. Um, and then also uh, six and seven is a booth at the festival. They they bring these mohair lace uh, and DK weight wool combinations every year. Uh, so that was really fun to see. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, people always ask, well, what kind of projects can you make with that? And you mentioned a ton of them that I think are really uh, wonderful. But the thing I'm going to probably make with this, these two skeins is Caitlin Hunter's co-book. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, hat, which you can see in this photo has really wonderful halo. So I'm really looking forward to that this year. So well, yeah. Full disclosure, I cast on a pair of fingerless mitts in this dark amber uh, merino wool and then like bright gold silk mohair, both from S. Charles, just to see what Ooh. it looked like. And yeah. it's like very, very pretty. Yeah. 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 Awesome. We'll look forward to seeing that on our Instagram account when that one's all done. All right. Thanks, Flossie. Uh, next up, we have Nellie. What do you have for us today, Nellie? So as a quilter in the past couple of years, I feel really seen in the fashion industry with the hot trend of quilt coats. Oh, yeah. And, and that's definitely continuing, except we're not seeing three quilted layers now. Uh, I'm seeing a lot more in luxury brands like Bodhi and just, you know, these expensive pieces, garments in the uh, luxury department stores and labels where they're taking patchwork pieces. They're putting together their fabrics and making patchwork out of the fabric before they go and create and cut out the pattern for the dress or the garment. Um, you can go patchwork light. So I love this dress that I found on Instagram. Um, it was less obvious. It was, you could see that there are patched elements to it, larger pieces, and it's not just for dresses. It um, it could be pants as well. Everyone loves a cool pair of patchwork plant pants a la Mary Poppins. Um, and um, you could go a little bit full on more quilty. So uh, it looks more obvious as a quilt. And some of these might be upcycled. They're um, purchased from vintage shops where it's just a quilt top that no one finished. Oh, so sad. Um, and But it has a new home now as a dress. Uh, there's a, a maker on Instagram. She made this beautiful nine patch um, it looks more traditional, but as a dress, it really feels modern and current. Um, the same maker also turned those uh, quilt tops into pullovers, which I think are really cool. It's a, it's an interesting way to uh, have that warm and cozy feeling a la cottage core, but not be too full on into it. Um, another way of including quilted elements is using things like appliques and English paper piecing. So I've seen a couple of pieces where they've applicate a pocket that looks like a tuliped flower. Um, and that's the pocket of the dress. And they applique the stem onto the dress. And there's additionally, for people who English paper piece or dabbled in it, didn't really like it, or just don't want to make a giant quilt out of English paper piece and uh, end up taking those pieces and adding them to a top as a decorative element. Um, there are also maxi skirts, a la Stevie Nicks, um, with real bigger patchwork, colorful pieces. And um, and those are really popular and trending as well. Uh, one of my favorites was the one that drew me to this trend was this bright pink dress that a, a woman, an Instagrammer had seen in a store. She'd seen a similar dress in a store. And it was some exorbitant, crazy price. And she goes, I'm, I'm going to make this. So she goes and uh, takes a quilt block and makes it the main panel element of the top of the dress, of the bodice, and then cuts another uh, piece for the skirt and has um, sort of like a quilt border at the hem of the skirt. So it's not entirely a quilted piece, but it's got these quilt elements. And as a quilter, I wear that every day, all day um, to represent. Um, and then following the same trend as up, again, it's upcycling, 
So seeing all these amazing linens, I, I personally love collecting vintage linens. Unfortunately, we don't entertain that way. It's people don't entertain in a fussy way anymore. You don't put out this beautiful, I wouldn't put out embroidered linens on my dining table anyway, <laughs> for fear of getting stains or um, getting uh, dirt on them. So I have a collection of linens. I love this idea where people are literally taking linens and cutting them into really cool smocked tops, really interesting ties. And it's not just on the body of the shirt. They're using pieces of the linen, the embroidered edges, if it's scalloped as the collar. So it's really interesting way of modernizing something, but might not have a lot of use. And honestly, people who probably had these linens kept them so um, perfect and um, in great condition because they didn't want to take them out to use them. That it's a great way to showcase this beautiful handwork in um, a piece of clothing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I recently inherited a whole trunk of linens from my husband's grandmother and just don't know what to do with it. So I love this trend. Now I've got a whole bunch of new ideas. And there are some pieces where like the corner is has the yellowing and I've tried to wash it and it didn't come out or it's got a stain, but there's a four panel. So I can use, you know, the other three panels cutting it out and using it as a patch or uh, really, it's really uh, energized my uh, optimism about using those linens. So thank you for that, Nellie. And next, we've got Michelle. Michelle, what do you have on deck for us for your trends today? But what I'm seeing a lot with color palette is that we are leaning towards both ends of the spectrum right now. So it's either a play on neutrals, not just one color neutral, but mellowing out the colors you're using with neutrals. And then the other end of maximalism, or what has been fondly used this year of dopamine dressing or styling to get that joy in, which is so great. And so with that, I'd love to highlight a couple different artists uh, for more of the neutral minimalism vibe. There's Hannah Ehrlich, who's this modern weaving artist, and she uses a lot of dynamic textures and a variety of mediums plus a development into the third dimension of her pieces to create an engaging art experience with just a few colors or hues. And then as we're leaning in to this, uh, some other well-known fiber artists, Marianne Mooney and Vanessa Barajo have been making moves this year from a very dynamic and bold color palette to playing with more and more neutrals and lighter tones with their pieces this year. And it's been really fun to see their growth and change. And I think a lot of people are going to follow in that. On the other end, I want to highlight Ken Kelleher, who's at Anchorball on Instagram. And uh, even this morning, I was just running through his feed because it just makes me so happy. And so I wanted to highlight first his flower child jacket, which literally makes my inner child scream with joy. It looks so fun. I want to run and jump in puddles in it. And then there's also this cozy couch he has that's called The Nest. And I just want to bundle up in it and have my little color fun in it. Uh, another thing on the color palette scheme for branding and marketing that I think is great to take a look at is that uh, I actually got this from a TikTok marketing trend forecaster, Nettie. And she, or actually, I apologize, Needy. Um, and she has taken a note that a lot of big brands have been leaning into faux-stalgia marketing, which means that they are simplifying both their design aesthetic while also taking a nod to a lot of their 70s color choices of the brand before. So that's something to maybe take some note on if you're looking at redesigning your packaging or building out new kits or patterns. Yeah, again, just from the fiber festival that I went to, I was keeping an eye out for the trends that you guys had spotted. And this one was everywhere. Just examples of kind of unorthodox color combinations or just what I was thinking of was like just color for the joy of it that just makes you smile and makes you feel warm and happy. Uh, this one jumped out at me from Retold Yarns. Uh, just a couple of unorthodox color combos, the silver screen line that she does uh, and her film reel sock kit. Uh, so look, you know, look at what you can do with just some really cool color combinations. And, and I love the theme that she put around it as well. Um, then in another booth, I saw Joanne Obara's horse quilt. 
uh, this is just a simple panel that she pulled out and then she brought in some really cool uh, electric rainbow uh, horse, the, the panel, and then the electric rainbow colors around, around the edging just brought me joy. I just loved looking at it and touching it and just think about how happy you'd feel having that in your house as, as decor. Uh, and then just some of these really... I don't know, but bizarro, like not really color combos that you would normally choose or what we've seen uh, just displayed like this one from the Colorado Fiber Company. I just saw this from the back side of the booth and I'm like, well, there it is. That's exactly what Michelle's talking about. Just all out, go for it, color, whatever makes you happy. Just go ahead and spin it up and see what you get. Uh, so love seeing that in in real life uh, at the Fiber Festival for sure. Awesome. Yeah. All right. And then next we've got Rebecca. Rebecca, what do you've got for us uh, for trends this time around? So I want to talk about advent boxes and countdown calendars. Um, these have been around for a couple of years, mostly the advent style or countdown to Christmas, where it's a set, um, an assortment of goodies, either packaged in a box or in little envelopes. So you can open one each day in December leading up to Christmas. Hmm. Um, I feel like I've seen a bunch this year uh, for a whole bunch of different uh, crafting areas and not just for Christmas. Um, while the bulk of my trends are for Christmas because that's the season we're in. Um, and unfortunately, many of these have sold out. So if you've missed the boat this year, <laughs> pay attention for next year. Um, but they, they have them now. Like Jimmy Bean's Wool has Fright Club and they count down to Halloween. Um, the Stitchy Box has seasonal countdowns. There's one for each season. Uh, Jimmy Beans will also has a birthday box. So whatever month your birthday is in, you can have 30 days of little tiny presents. Um, they're a great way to get some new tools or some new notions. And as a customer side of things, there is that FOMO of these are exclusive things. They're a limited offering. It's a limited time. Um, I'm still currently deciding whether or not to indulge in the cross stitch of the Christmas Carol from Forbidden Fiber Company. Um, it's a mystery stitch along, but you get some goodies and it's, you know, it's our favorite family Christmas movie. So there's always something kind of intriguing about it without, you know, taking up a whole lot of space. And isn't this a fun, festive, you know, new tradition you can have um, for so for the consumer side, it can be really fun to indulge for yourself, to give to another crafter. Um, the things you get in your kit might be something that you then give to a fellow crafter as a little pick-me-up or as a swap package if you really don't need or want more stitch markers or another tape measure or, you know, the little swag. And this kind of touches on the merch that Annalisa talked about in the beginning. There's stickers and pins and you know you're on the same team because we've got some fun stuff um, on the maker side of things for content it does take a lot of work to put these together to curate a box and coordinate sourcing all those other supplies and goodies and if things are personalized like with the stitchy uh the stitch supply advent calendar there's some personalization item in there um there's just there's so many possibilities and it, it takes a lot of time you have to have them ready in advance so that they can ship out to people in time for the holiday or season or what have you. Um, on the opposite side of that, if you are putting these boxes together, you could theoretically plan out a month of content real easy with an unboxing video every day or schedule your Instagram posts for we're going to unbox this month. And then you can kind of have your December, if it's for Christmas, already planned and taken care of. And that could be um, a way to get some of your time back in at the end of the year. Um, so I will tell you, I have indulged in two of these kits myself. Um, the Barrett Wool Company kit, <laughs> the Good Tidings box is on my is on the way because I love what Susan B. Anderson does. So going sight unseen into a kit of hers, I, I'm confident it will have lots of goodies. And then I've also signed up for the Stitch Supply Advent Calendar out of pure curiosity. I'm very curious to see what, what kind of goodies are in there. So you can expect daily posts from me in our, our group chat of, you know, look what I got. <laughs> <laughs> we'll look forward to that. We'll all be, we'll all be jealous of the, the show and tell that we share in our Slack channel over at Stitchcraft. It's always fun. Thank you for that. 
Uh, and I and I love what you added just about how you can utilize some of these trends in your marketing. And I know a lot of our listeners uh, and our viewers here are probably thinking about how do they incorporate some of these trends and just want to do sort of a gentle reminder that you don't have to do all of these trends. You don't have to wipe away your entire inventory and go, oh my gosh, I need something from everything now. And you know, out with the old and in with the new. Uh, we typically recommend that you have maybe 10% of your inventory be always kind of sort of trend sensitive or on trend um, because you, you don't want to get caught up in uh, just feeling that pressure to constantly be turning over your inventory with whatever the next new trend is. But at the same time, you do want to give your customers something new and exciting. So trends are a great way to keep your eye on that. Um, not sure if any of you guys want to add anything else about uh, trend spotting or how how did you guys come up with trends? Does anybody have anything they want to add? Like, I know for me, I just kind of saw things around, you know, in several different places. And once you guys listed all your trends, I started seeing them everywhere. Um, I was joking with Nelly that I was at a restaurant the other day and I saw a woman wearing a quilt dress with a yoke. And I was like, oh my gosh, I got to get a photo of that. That's Nelly's trend. And you just start seeing it everywhere. So I'm curious, how did you guys come up with some of these ideas for your trends? Anybody? Yeah, I think, I think I just was seeing a lot of fiber blending happening everywhere. I've been seeing it for the last couple of years, but I feel like it's really picked up this year. And then mm -hmm. once I started seeing it, it was everywhere, which I think, what is that? Like the batter Meinhof syndrome where like right. once you see something, you just yeah. keep seeing it. Yep. Yeah. That's what happened. And then of course, I mean, I've been harassing you all in the group chat because every time something pops up on Instagram, I'm like, oh, it's my trend. It's my trend. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it is just a matter of being so tuned into it that I'm now noticing it. Like when I saw Rebecca's trend, I cannot tell you how bummed I am that I missed the Costco dog advent calendar for my dog. I wish uh, it had not sold out because I saw her trend and then I started looking for things and I was like, oh, there was a dog advent calendar with dog treats and dog right. toys. I would have bought that. Like, yeah. Yeah. I will send yeah. you the link to the, the stationary advent calendar I also wow. found. You're killing me. <laughs> I know. Yeah. yeah. So I I found mine mostly through um, being on newsletters for the makers that I, I'm interested in and the companies I'm interested in. And so as early, early in this year, you started getting um, information to sign up for some of these countdown calendars because they're timely. They need to have them in, you know, in place to, to mail out in time. But then I think starting to talk about them and then feeding the Instagram and Facebook algorithms, I started getting ads for others as well. So everything right. is kind of tuned in. Mm -hmm. You know, once you start looking, you see it everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. As someone who's chronically online, once you start training the algorithm to look for something, it will feed it to you, man. Like I was like, oh, these are cute stickers. And then it's like, oh no, these are more cute stickers. And have you seen this yarn shop's cute stickers? And what about this yarn crawls pins? I'm like, Right. Guys. And of course, it's tis. It's also, you know, tis the season. We're doing, you know, fall trends. This is prime time for those, especially for my trend for like gift items and little stocking stuffers and things for your small group. Like this is the great time to pull all those things together. So it's, it's, you know, maybe a little bit past to get it planned out for this year, but you plan for the next season because they will buy, man, my, my add to cart says so. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'll say what, oh, sorry. Um, one of my quirkiest ways to spot trends is that I am actually a thrift store frequenter. So if I start to see that, like going on Nelly's trend, I used to see quilts and linens available all the time. And then all of a sudden, they're off the shelves, you can not find them at all. And so that's a fun way to get curious about what's going on and then start looking at that on your social channels and see what people are making. Mm -hmm. On the flip side of that, Michelle, is when you see a trend in Target, that's when you know the trend <laughs> has peaked. So when you see a quilt jacket at Target, you know, okay, that's a thing now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I think uh, just on my behalf, uh, I think it really speaks to uh, the nature of our Stitchcraft community that we um, kind of feed each other's addictions and um, share each other's because with uh, seven of us all paying attention to social media, we can see and share and point out things that um, just one person can't, can't do. So I think that's 
uh, something that I really uh, appreciate about what we are able to, to do. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you everybody for your feedback on that. I think our viewers and our clients are always curious, how do I get that crystal ball to see what's coming next? So this has been a great exercise in what is coming next. And hopefully if our audience really appreciates this, we may be back in the spring of 2024 with another trend spotting video for you guys. So shoot us a quick email or leave us a comment and let us know if uh, you appreciated this kind of content and we'll develop more for you. Uh, if you're curious about Stitchcraft marketing and how we might be able to help you, uh, if you've got some trends in mind and you're just not sure how to incorporate that into your strategy or your social programs, we're here to help. Uh, so reach out to us at stitchcraftmarketing.com. So thanks everybody for your time and we'll see you next time.